Welcome, uh, everyone. We are gathered here today to explore challenges um, and best practices to advance decent work in global supply chains. Organized by the International Labour Organization, the Ministry of Social Affairs and Employment, and the Social and Economic Council of the Netherlands. Decent work is um, employment that um, enables workers for a productive and sustainable work that takes place under conditions such as equality, security, and freedom. However, in many supply chains, decent work uh, problems still remain. And that is why today we're coming together with different stakeholders, such as unions, NGOs, governments, and companies, to see what we can do together to fight these um, deficits. Ladies and gentlemen, we have invited you today for a social dialogue on what it really means to move toward global supply chains with decent working conditions. What steps are necessary? What challenges do we face taking these steps? And what assistance and which tools are available to overcome these challenges? The new report from ILO, synthesizing the results from a project that uses supply chains as an entry point for advancing decent work in five sectors around the world, will help us explore answers to all these questions. I am proud that our own Dutch ILO director, Alette van Leur, is here today to present you this report. So today, uh, I'm very proud to present the um, new synthesis reports, challenges and opportunities to advance decent work in five countries and supply chains. It's coffee in Colombia, electronics in Vietnam, fisheries in Namibia, uh, rubber glass in Malaysia, and and textiles and clothing in Madagascar. So this particular project focuses in the first instance on deep dives into these five sectors and five um, countries. And then following that, we have uh, a set of recommendations on how to address them. And the next stage is capacity building for workers and employers and governments to address these challenges. We provide that support through development cooperation projects, whereby we will uh, train people the biggest obstacle is governance gaps. So supply chains need to become sustainable, not just in terms of environmental sustainability, but also in terms of a decent future of work. I don't think any consumer in the world will still accept child labor. Yet we see an increase in child labor around the world, but also forced labor is on the increase. So this is serious. There's no one who understands all the supply chains from, uh, from the beginning to the end. So it's very complex. There are people involved in many different countries, many different supply chains. And people who are working in a factory and also the people who are running the factory, they are the ones who have the best knowledge about what's really happening on the ground. And if they get to uh, talk to each other, we can really get uh, improvement on the ground and make real impact. And we thought it's very important to bring this agenda and this information uh, of the new study by the ILO also to The Hague so that we can discuss it here with all the partners. And then there's, I think, no better place than to do this at the SER, where the social dialogue uh, is, uh, well, it, it was maybe the house of social dialogue in the Netherlands. We will now have a short discussion with our panelists. What do you take away from the findings of the ILO report that came out today? What I take away from this is um, two things. Um, one is governance gaps and the other is sectoral dialogue. I agree with Lucia. Uh, the main problem is uh, governance gaps and uh, how to tackle them. W what we need is action. I just wanted to highlight one other uh, specific cause uh, um, that we are paying uh, explicit uh, attention to within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and that are the living wages, living incomes. Um, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs supports the ILO's project on setting adequate wages. Oshin. Uh, thanks very much. And thank you very much um, to the ILO for the excellent report. Our kind of big piece of legislation is the Corporate Sustainability Due Diligence Directive. Just to give you a quick update on where we are with that. The Parliament is, has not quite um, adopted a negotiating position just yet. Um, they may well do so in the next five to six weeks. 
it'll you know have the potential to be very much a game changer in the space for both EU <coughs> and um, non-EU companies. We really look forward to continuing our work uh, with the ILO in this space. So now we will move on to three breakout sessions. So make some noise, say yes to yourself, make some noise. I'd like to go to Femke. Oh, my bag is a Dutch uh, brand that makes leather bags and accessories. We always say that our bags are a means towards creating more jobs, better jobs, higher incomes, more opportunities for women uh, in India, where we produce. There are multiple challenges in this, of course. Uh, one of it would be distance. Another challenge is that we do not own our factories. Uh, so sometimes our leverage for decent work projects is limited, meaning that our influence is also limited, but still uh, we try to do as much as we can. Something that we piloted last year is to set up a digital worker survey at all our producers in India, uh, meaning that we were able to get direct input from the people making our products uh, on their job. At this moment, putting an effort in creating decent work at your producers is all very voluntary. And I feel like we need more regulation. So that is something that the government might be able to help with to, uh, for example, make it obligatory to know who your producers are and how the working conditions are. I think in, in five to 10 years, we will have a law and that will ensure that the bar is raised for companies and that we can actually make some lasting impact in production countries when it comes to these um, decent work deficits. I hope that we will have succeeded in uh, creating a, an, an economic environment where people can work safely, where they get proper pay for their work. You also need to work on legislation, on due diligence, and that is one of the areas where we've also been supportive of both the initiatives on the, on the European level, but also on the national level to uh, improve legislation. Everyone can profit from such a positive agenda.